Hi, I'm Zoe Mosler. Hi, Siglar. Hi, Zoe. We're I'm Dr. Siglar. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're very happy to have you here at the Career Tech Center. And we'd just like to talk to you about what plans you have as our new superintendent. So first, I would like to ask, why did you take on the task of being our new superintendent? And what drew you specifically to this position? I have a wife of uh, 21 years, uh, Darcy, uh, and two boys. Um, Z uh, Zane, who's my youngest, who's a sophomore, going to be a junior, and then Colson, who's a senior, who's going to be uh, going to Western Michigan to study engineering. But I had to have that conversation with them first. To get to your question about what drew me to this area and, and to TBA ISD, having an opportunity to really look into the incredible programs and people and um, without question, it is uh, it was one of the most respected uh, places in the state of Michigan. It's an honor to be selected as the next superintendent and be a part of such a, a wonderful organization. That's great, thank you. We're happy to have you here. Yeah. You were talking about the people here and I was just wondering uh, what you would like students to think of you when they meet you. I, I hope you get to know me as someone that's approachable. I am first and foremost a teacher at heart and uh, I get the most joy out of my day and when I can connect with kids and students. I got into teaching because I really wanted to make a difference in students lives. So I hope one first and foremost you see me as approachable. Uh, you're going to see me around. I like to be visible. I think it's important to, to build relationships with with staff and students and the way you do that is you're visible uh, and you have a listening ear. You worked at uh, an impoverished school area and I was just wondering um, how you, that experience could help you with Career Tech Center. So I, I really believe we're a product of our experiences and we, we learn from, from those experiences and uh, I, feel, I feel blessed to have had some, some tremendous uh, learning experience in, in my career. So I started out as a teacher um, and an administrator in uh, Rockford Public Schools, which is north of Grand Rapids. And then I had an opportunity um, after uh, being an administrator for a while to serve Baldwin Community Schools as their superintendent. Uh, it was a rural community, as many of the communities uh, around the surrounding Traverse City area is. And so it comes with unique challenges, whether it's distance to, to places, transportation. Um, in some cases, um, you know, poverty is, is something that comes with that. So those are unique challenges that you really need to experience to be able to learn how to best support uh, and help. What motivates you personally and professionally? Because I know being a teacher is a very tough and important job. Uh, one, one could argue it's the most noble of professions, right? I, I think being a teacher is like none other because you have an opportunity to impact the lives of students. And we have to recognize that it is our students that are really going to truly make a difference in the world. And so it's important that, that you're well-rounded. It's important that you have the academic acumen to be what you want to be. We want you to be able to reflect on your experiences and say, I'm here because of a teacher. There are, there are certain priorities in my life, faith, family, um, friends, and education. I have a philosophy that I'm put on this earth to serve others, and so I really believe in servant leadership. And so whatever I can do to make your experience better, our staff members' experience better, um, our fellow superintendents in, in the ISD, what services can we do, can I do, uh, to, uh, to make the, the area strong, stronger than what we left it. And you're saying how teaching is one of the most noble of professions, and what do you believe makes a teacher a teacher? So first and foremost, I think it's a connection with kids. There has to be a relationship. Dr. James Comier once uh, penned that no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. And I truly, truly believe that. Uh, we have to em embody and embrace the fact that our students are coming to us with, with a lot on their mind. And until we truly understand where they're coming from, uh, what their hopes and dreams are, we're really not going to be able to reach them. 
And so what, what we do as teachers is we, we first and foremost build relationships with students. And then once we've built that relationship, then it's our responsibility to challenge them, to make sure that they have the supports that they can be successful, um, and to um, foster their dreams and hopes. You spoke of what relationships um, really mean to you and how they've motivated you. I was wondering, is there a teacher in your life that really changed you and made you want to become who you are today? Uh, the one teacher in my life that made such a profound impact was actually my mother. She was uh, a longtime educator, ended up uh, finishing her career as the superintendent of the school district in which I graduated from, and made such a profound impact in that school uh, that they ended up uh, dedicating the building after her, which is a testament to her incredible heart and servant leadership, and that's who I try to emulate. But I will say that each and every teacher, uh, in their own way, has left a mark um, and has motivated me in some way to become the best that I could be. As a student as well, there have been many teachers who have touched my life, and I'm just wondering, um, what makes you want to change students' lives? So uh, I, that's, a, that's a challenging question because it's, it really kind of gets to what drives you as a person, right? Uh, the importance of having a positive attitude and, and working hard and giving everything you can. Um, those are things that have been instilled in me from my father and my mother and my family. And what is your overall vision for TBA? One of the first things that I think it's going to be important for me to do is really to get to know individuals, listen. I think it would be presumptuous for me to come in and say, this is what we need to do. I'm excited to start a process by which we gather that data and information. I want to know, Zoe, what you think. I want to know what our staff members think. I want to know what uh, the ISD superintendents think. Uh, it's really important to gather that data and information and use that to build a vision and build a, a path to achieving our goals. You spoke a lot about communication and how that is key. Um, we, are, we serve a large five county area mm -hmm. and how do you plan on helping communication between all these different areas? Yeah, that's, a, that's the million dollar question, right? Uh, the communication and, and how do we make sure that everyone is, is informed, um, feel supported on the same page and some of the th great things that are going on right now in terms of, of newsletters, and uh, this is a great opportunity, right? What a great collaborative effort, effort between the Front Street Riders and the film and media production to be able to use this as an avenue to communicate to the broader community about the great things that are happening. And so uh, kudos to your fellow students. I think it's really enhancing programs like that and making sure that the, the communication is clear and consistent and reaches a broad audience. Great, thank you. Yeah. And Maria, what challenges do you believe you will be facing here at TBA ISD, if any? So I think there are some general challenges that face all public schools, ISDs, uh, challenging such as school funding, uh, just new initiatives that, that may be coming um, out of Lansing that we have to be prepared for and ready for. That's going to be part of my job is to really find out and, and speak with the individuals that are most affected that are here to identify uh, maybe from their perspective what are some of those challenges and then try to work uh, collaboratively to try to solve some of those and address them. And uh, speaking of funding, um, how do you make decisions during difficult times, uh, including funding versus students? I don't think you could have been in education uh, and not have to have that really challenging question. The funding always doesn't match what we want to do in order to offer programs and services to our students and families. Uh, you have to identify what those priorities are and that's part of that visioning and that long-range plan. If it's identified in your goals and your plan, then that, that shows you that that's your priority. Uh, but then I think on a, on a more specific level, I think you have to look at the programs that affect kids first and look at trying to get creative in ways to save money on the outside 
in order to be able to provide the necessary services for student programmings on the inside. So, and not always look at it as a, as a deficit. We need to cut, 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 but how do we try to enhance and grow uh, even in difficult times? As you were speaking about funding and what you hope to do, um, what is your biggest hope for your main accomplishment here at TBA ISD? It's, it's challenging to say at the end of the game, what will that look like? I'll, I'll share with you a conversation that I've had with several staff members now that uh, in my home district. Several of them have come up to me and, and have indicated that um, they are very uh, appreciative of the time, energy, and effort, and the leadership that we've provided. And they've said, you have left our district better than when you came. And I hope that would be my dream, uh, that at the end of the day, that individuals, students, staff members, families would say, when he's left us, he's left us a better, uh, better organization, a better place than when he came. And I know that's going to be a challenge because we're already an outstanding organization, but that would be my goal. That's a great goal. I, I believe you'll reach that. Um, I'm happy to have you guys in the community. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much for doing this interview. Yeah, it's great and to it's, meet you. It's great so to we, meet you. We yeah. look forward to having you here. Thank so. you.